It's been a while. Back again, the Sketcho Show podcast. Sketchy, sketchy. Had to take some time off, folks. I guess it was just one of those things that I couldn't really steer away from. I had to make time for myself and reel from certain things that basically caused the old Omatic to sketch Omatic reevaluate myself. We'll get into it. But today, back again, is my dear friend and co-worker, fellow producer, DJ Regulate, is back in the house today. And I'm really excited to have him back on because it's been a minute since uh, since he was last on. I think he was on episode like 30-something, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to check my, my uh, Spotify real quick and make sure. Stand by. Yeah. Episode 32 was the last time DJ Regulate was on. Wow. And now... We're moving into episode 54. Oh, my God. Look at that. I mean, we're trucking along here with breaks and gaps in between, but I'm doing my best, folks, and I'm really glad. If this is the first time you're checking out the sketch matic Show podcast, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, I post when I can post, and I produce a podcast episode when I can. Shit ain't easy, but bear with me, because every episode that comes out, I put everything into it. And if you're new to the podcast, please follow the podcast on whatever platform you're on. If you're on Spotify, hit that follow button. I'm trying to get my followers up, folks, and... Uh, I'm doing it for free. Oh, for you. All right. Without further ado, the producer for Booker and Stryker on Alt 98.7, right here in Los Angeles at iHeartMedia, back again, DJ Regulate. Oh, my God. What's up, Sketch? Feeling fresh with DJ Regulate. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, man. Regulate. How are you? One of the calmest, most laid back people i know pull that <laughs> mic right in front of you too bro gotcha there we go so what's going on what's new in the re- you know what i was gonna ask what's besides what's new in regulates world what's your real name again edward edward that's right that's right <laughs> i was going through every other name today bro i was edward yeah all right edward aka dj regulate this is a uh, christian asking edward how is edward doing my real name's christian so I'm doing well overall. You know, everyone goes through their ups and downs and there's uh, hardships. And But I like how you said prioritizing yourself is yeah, really bro. important, man. And I feel that. I feel that. So much has happened in the country the past couple of days, uh, last few days since this past weekend. We're recording this smack dab in the middle of July. Mm-hmm. Uh, the RNC is happening right now. The Republican National Convention. I myself am not a Republican, but I have to watch it just because of everything that transpired with Trump almost getting shot. Yeah. You know, Richard Simmons died. Dr. Yeah. Ruth died. Shannon, Shannon Doherty, Doherty died. Who else died? Somebody else died. Jacoby Jones, NFL player. There you go. Jacoby Jones. I think one more person died, too. Uh, off the top of my head. It was, he was like a guy on a... He was... It, oh, well, maybe it was a little... It was last week, but he died... Because he was in his car with his dog and he fell asleep, but it was his service dog, and I forget his name, but he was on a TV show on Alf. That's right. He played oh, a the kid, kid on Alf. Yeah. Yeah. So R.I.P. to all those folks. Mm-hmm. Um there's so much to get to. Me personally, it's been like what, the last podcast episode I put out was in May. And since May, it's been definitely like a challenging healing of the heart i'll just say this without putting out too many details right i put myself out there again the old omatic put himself out there in the meaning of trying to woo a lovely woman Mm. right okay that i i grown to have feelers for however it wasn't reciprocated the sentiment wasn't reciprocated you know it was a rejection yeah like that old commercial from back in the day that used to have just for men in five minutes. It's all rejection. <laughs> I know exactly. Rejected what you're about. and dejected. Yeah. Yeah. That was me. Oh, there's Mr. Graybeard approaching Miss Hottie. Oh, no. Rejected. Clyde, that's got to hurt. Yeah. No play for Mr. Gray. Those are tough, man. It was tough. And it kind of just, it, it made me, you know, step back and it wasn't bad or anything. It wasn't like, she dogged me out or, or did me dirty or anything. It was, it was very, what's it called? Mature and 
amicable, am, well, amicable is when you both feel the, the same way. Right. I, I was feeling one way. She wasn't. Right. And that's fine. Rejected. I, and I talked to a friend of mine. She was like, dude, you just seem to go after unavailable women, period. Like, and you don't, you lust after women a lot rather than find the, per, find the person that's going to reciprocate the same kind of energy. Gotcha. And, and I was like, damn. That's pretty accurate. You know, like, you know, when somebody calls you out, but not calls you out in a mean way, but it's more like a coach. The truth. Right. You know, like it hurts sometimes. And so, but even with all that, even with my close friends and me talking to you now about it, it still fucking stings. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just stings. And I'm cool with rejection. Rejected. I'm not going to make a scene or try to, you know, convince anybody. It's just as I get older and because I don't drink anymore or do party favors other than weed and coffee. Um, <laughs> coffee? Yeah. Like caffeine. Yeah, yeah. Good. You're right. Like, you're you know, right. Weed yeah, and yeah, coffee yeah. and nicotine. Okay. Um, but outside of that, I'm do, so in a sense, I'm California sober. And when you're sober and you get rejected or if you're in a whatever bad relationship and something goes bad with the or when it comes to matters of the heart, when you, when you don't drink, it really fucking hits you. Like, cause you're sober enough to analyze mm. the pain and the sting of it. And man, I tell you, bro, it's a rough one because I, we were talking off pod. I, I work from home and I'm alone a lot. Yeah. I do my walks. I get my exercise in. I do my pull-ups. I try to stay healthy. But even during all that, I'm, I could still feel, it's like a cut on the roof of your mouth. Ooh, you know what I mean? That yeah. would heal if you just stopped tonguing it. Got that from Fight Club. But... <laughs> Yeah, man, it, it fucking sucks, bro. And I, I just been I've been reeling from that, and I'm just like, why do I, why do I do this? Why do I put myself out there, and knowing it's probably going to backfire and it's going to stink? But it, this one kind of backfired in a few different ways, and I can't get into the details of that just because this pod is about you. But let's just say it, it branched out into different areas that I didn't expect, and that added to the sting of it. Gotcha. At this point. Putting myself out there again, I would rather put a campfire out with my face. Oh no! Well, I mean, it's it's part of the human element, man. To have have that. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, to just put yourself out there, just you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. you're a good-looking dude. Pause. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. It's uh, one man to another. You're a handsome dude, too. Yeah. Not trying to go out with you. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I can call him. Like, I see it. Yeah, go ahead. But like, obviously, you're going to have women that are attracted to you and vice versa. But it's just part of the human. It's part of the human element, man, for you to just put yourself out there. Be vulnerable. I did. I was. And it was it was so wonderful to communicate with somebody on like a deep level. Yeah. Going back to what you said, you're a good looking guy. And I struggle with that because as I get older, I'm like, man, I can really, I feel like I'm losing my everything. Like besides my hair, <laughs> you know, like a, <laughs> I'm losing it. Like I feel so not confident in how I appear because I'm so thin. I try to lift weights. I can't gain weight if my life depends. I can eat 3000 calories a day and like nothing happens. It's fucking crazy. bro. Yeah. And Yet, I can kind of get cut. I'm losing a, my belly from all the carbs, all the bread I ate. I gave up bread recently. Nice. Trying to just stay away from it. I'm eating fucking salads and shit. Dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Taking walks, working Yeah, I'm taking out. walks and I'm doing pull-ups and shit. I'm not doing anything crazy. I don't have weights. But I'm trying to at least feel like my body can benefit from just the the physical workouts and it's just the endorphin so it feels good to do it and then i get home and i feel proud of it but then i look in the mirror and i'm like man you used to be cute what the fuck oh man yeah. I, I mean you but know? there's a different type of so confidence level when you're older you know what i mean you get that old man mm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. uh, distinguished yes right the um, wisdom and yeah the, yeah i feel you know yeah. I, I like that too but i also feel like my looks definitely played into this person not being interested mm. that and that part. And, and yet, even though she never said anything about it, didn't draw attention to how I look at all in any shape, way or form. You're ugly. It's still like, but I'll bet you if you were, 
it probably wouldn't be like this. Mm. But again, um, that's the what if or, you know, that's just purely spec, uh, speculation. speculating. It's yeah. just speculating. I don't know for, you know, the person told me she just wasn't interested in dating or getting into another relationship. Fine. That's cool. But at the same time, it's like I didn't really get the benefit of the doubt. Didn't really get a chance to mm. show and prove, if you will. Now, are you still friends? That's the thing. I don't think we are. I don't believe so. She she plucked me out of her orbit. So man, and IG plays a big role. She unfollowed and removed me as a follower. Oh, and, no. and I'm like, what did I do? Like, yeah. I'm questioning. Like, what the fuck did I do? Yeah, I just laid off Instagram for a couple of weeks because I was trying to heal. Oh, for two. And I wasn't watching anybody's stuff. Nobody. Like I just wasn't on. Yeah. And it felt good. It felt good to to look at my screen Unplug. time. And then when I did go back on a couple of weeks later, or maybe a week later, you know, I checked and sure enough, and I was like, wow, that's wild. Rejected. That seems very personal and kind of a bit excessive. Yeah. You I know agree. what I mean? I agree. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Oh, for two. Well, probably for the better, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You don't need that. Just cut it out. Yeah. No, I did. I did. It's just, it's rough. It's just, it's a rough situation. And I'm like, Why? Do I care so much about this whole scenario? Is it because I'm at home alone, sober enough to reflect too much in your thoughts, in my thoughts, in my head? Mm -hmm. And I'm like watching, I'm, you know, I binge watched, uh, well, I, I binge watched a couple of shows recently that I've already watched a few times, but I watched it again because I needed that. It's like comfort food, but comfort TV for me. I get which that. Which is like Sopranos. Dexter, and now I'm watching some new shit. But like those two shows were like comforting to me. Classic. And I rewatched all of it with the Sopranos podcast included. And I was like, this is next level, right? <laughs> next level fucking podcast with Sopranos. I was like, bro, it inspired me to want to do more another podcast. And you're better off anyway. She was cute, okay, but come on. What you going through? What you feeling right now? It happens sometimes. Everybody gets the blues. And then I, I, I rewatched Dexter because I just like how Michael C. Hall, he narrates to himself during the show. And I, I find that very comforting, even though it's about a serial killer who right. kills serial killers. That you're rooting for. I'm rooting for him. My name is Dexter. Dexter Morgan. I don't know what made me the way I am, but whatever it was left a hollow place inside. People fake a lot of human interactions, but I feel like I fake them all. And I fake them very well. Let me ask you, Go are you going to watch this new prequel? The, you mean Dexter for uh, New Blood? Yeah. No, oh, uh, there's a prequel coming Wait, out. Wait, there's a new Dexter thing coming yeah. out? Yeah. What? Yeah, you haven't heard? No. There's what? a prequel. Break it on down. Yeah, so it's when he's a kid. Oh, shit. Yeah. You mean like, because he was born in blood? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. with his pops with harry yeah right the adopted father yep wow man yeah michael c hall came back as dexter for uh season nine after 10 years yeah but like it was up north in upstate new york that's where they filmed it as opposed to miami my jemmy right so totally different and dexter's obviously older his son comes to find him yep and it's it's pretty wild, but I didn't wasn't really fond of the way it ended. To me, I was like, "Really, Harrison? Really, you're going to do that of season nine? Yeah, that's mm. it's like the end. It's the end. Now they could carry on with Harrison, right? Do, carrying on because he's supposed to come to L.A. or whatever. I don't know because it it's it was the first season of this Dexter New Blood, but I don't want to give it away because it's still fairly new, and I I feel like people haven't seen it, so I don't want to totally yeah. ruin it because, yeah but it it ends in a very kind of it's one of those like really bro yeah I but get i that. see where he was coming from but i'm still like that's your dad bro like what yeah <laughs> unacceptable <laughs> it's as bad as getting fucking removed and unfollowed on instagram <laughs> rejected all right it's enough of oh, that for two. anywho uh, back to you regulate i'm sorry, sorry. i just no this you're is good like bro to me. hey yeah exactly i love it this is like therapy to me uh getting it off my chest and I don't want to dwell. 
How are you, Reg, with the show, with like life in general? I know that your girl has got more hours now. You don't see each other personally. That's kind of weighing on you. How's work going? How's Regulate at work, producer Regulate? The show's great. Yeah. The guys, Booker, Striker, they're awesome. You couldn't ask for it better group of guys to hang out with every day mm -hmm. um be in the studio clowning around um you know we're putting in work trying to figure out how to make the show better i was just thinking about that too by uh, by the way on the way here like, of how to no not how to make the show better but that question because mm. every every show here at iheart media los angeles always has to ask themselves that question. Right. no matter how big you are from ryan seacrest to who, whatever overnight show. Yeah. There's always room for improvement, no yeah. matter what, no matter what. So I asked myself, I wonder if Reg and the guys asked themselves this question, how can the show be better? And what have you guys come up with? What have you come up with? I've been personally thinking about a mix that you DJ, and we've talked about this on the last episode. I wish, and I, I don't know if I can be so open about it because there's going to be people that I really shouldn't name. Right. Um, but the short version of it is a lot of it's going to be rejected. Mm, like me? Yeah. I, I was, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Rejected. Uh, that, that we were just talking about rejection. Rejected. rejected. Um, a lot of the ideas are going to be swing and a miss. Um, so, you know, I'm people know that I'm a DJ, but alternative rock you don't really think of that on the radio station like oh we're gonna throw a mix you know you think of that with hip-hop but you, you can do it though it's been oh, done before easy, and i've easy. heard it i could do and it and it doesn't need to be hip-hop style it could just be transitions right it could just clean. be clean clean mixes like i was even thinking of doing a little mini mix here for this podcast episode with you and you don't have to do it i can do it but i would just need like five songs yeah right yeah reg's top five yeah and then i can transition those now i would ghost produce it but just as a kind of what's it called like a pro a prototype mix mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so it's not mixed by you it's going to be edited together not mixed on turntables but it'll give you an idea of what it can sound like in context right so i mean if we go on you know daily double and we look at the, the top alternative what are they like the top alternative five songs that you can name even if it's they're not top five but they're like some of your favorites as well um off the top of my head lit mm -hmm. um, by who the they're the band oh, is called lit that's how bad i am <laughs> uh lincoln park what track though by lit my like worst lit. my own worst enemy ah i know you know that one i do um but like just thinking of artists off the top of my head uh lincoln park of course uh incubus i like, like big data that song dangerous i always try mm. to i love that fucking riff yeah it's just it gets oh, me so many yeah. like a, a song that i really love that we play is electric feel and man i have so many ideas like oh this song could go into this song and and well to be fair they do have me dj alt events like i'll be right, at the you're alt. out at an appearance right like Copy i'll do that. the chargers games yep at the alt booth yep. i'll be at the booker and striker event and are you playing DJing. alternative music or are alt. you mixing it in with a little dr dre just for the la crowd it, it, it depends on the event uh-huh so yeah, this is dr. Dre. at chargers games we have three booths we have real we have kiss and we have Alt 98.7. Mm -hmm. So I got to keep it fairly Alt because we have the other two right. stations being represented. Um, we had a can uh, an event with the band Cannons for Valentine's Day. That was 90% alternative. Mm -hmm. The Booker and Striker bowling event, I got to be, have fun, be creative. I probably threw some next episode in there. Yes, you should. Yeah. Come you know, now. with some Nirvana. Right. Mixed with, you know. I love the hip hop rock. Yeah. Mix. It's yeah, always going fun back to and do. forth. Yeah. 99 problems into like yeah. some Lincoln Park. Yeah. Right. It, Throw some it, it 50 works. Cent in there. Yeah. yeah. So it depends on the event. Depends on the crowd. But see in the mix on air. I mean, I know that probably wouldn't fly. You got it. It has to be by the book here. By yes. the booker. Exactly. And, um, exactly. I mean, but I would you love. 
love to, though. You can do it. It is possible, and it doesn't have to be long. It can be, like we said, a top five, a minute segment, mm -hmm. maybe even 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Depending on how fast I can mix those songs we just talked about or some of those, mm -hmm. it's different when you hear it in context. That's why I was like, maybe you should just do one, and then they hear it. Right. Because it's one thing in theory to hear it and see it. I'm sorry, to see it on paper, right, as an idea. But then the idea doesn't really get fully experienced without actual uh, evidence of it right. to, to show what it can sound like. Yeah. And then when you hear those songs being mixed together, it's exciting. Yeah. Like, oh, and you kind of want more, right? You always want a little more. And then it's like, just gives you enough to want more, which is a huge thing in PPM radio ratings. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that idea. Yeah. I mean, I would love to, man. I really would. I think it would bring a whole nother aspect to the show i believe it would i just it would hit the crowd because la likes mixes mm -hmm. they like mixes mm -hmm. it's a fun thing ellen k has me doing mashup or not mashup but like mixes like top five uh world like when she celebrated earth day she mm -hmm. had me do a, like a, a mo it's called a montage a music montage of all the songs that talk about earth and world. And I use Daft Punk around the world and yeah. it was dope. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I went from one track to another and it just, they were all mixed in key, right? So the songs sound like, for lack of a better term, it's like the songs transitioning into each other sounds like they're kind of holding hands. Yeah. Meaning the key matches right. the previous song and the song after matches that key. So it's like, boom, boom, boom. And then it ends and you're like, oh, Come on, give me one more. It's good, man. And I think you can deliver that. Thank you. I, I know you can. I, I, I honestly would love to. So we should work on that. And because mm -hmm. I'm down to present that to the powers that are influencing everything. You know what I mean? Too bad I don't have like a clip of Booker and Stryker that we could just put, you know, insert in this podcast. Well, actually I do because they were both on the podcast, but I want them talking to each other, introducing you. So in a way I'd have to pretend or we'd have to pretend like we're Booker and Stryker. <laughs> Which one would you be, Booker or Stryker? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. It, I wish there was an app for that, like on TikTok where it's like, who would you, which Disney character would you, which all 98.7 personality would you be? There you go. I probably... Uh, that's a tough one, man. Because they're both super cool, man. Yeah. You know? Uh, they're, but they're quite different. Oh, I know that. Yeah, they're, they're the odd couple. They're both equally in the cool exactly, league. Exactly. But like, they're total, they're night and day. Yeah. And it's funny when people tell me, the, some of the powers that be here at iHeart, they say, I can't tell them apart. I'm all, really? Yeah. That's unacceptable. <laughs> like, I feel like I can tell them apart right away. Right away, I know who's who. Maybe because I've known Stryker longer, because I heard him on the air longer. What do they call him? I've heard few people call him twins. They are kind of twins-like, sort yeah. of. But but I would okay. To go back to who would I be? I think I'd be Booker. Show you the money. Just because I like how laid back he is. Yeah, Stryker is a lot like me in real life. Just you know, we're always like moving to the next thing and kind of anxious about it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I, and I respect that because I'm very much like ah, yeah. always like yeah. You know? Yeah. But I want to try the other side. I, Booker and you are always like, hey, yeah, what's going on? Real chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. I'm like, ah! I'm, you know, I'm running around with my pants on fire. You'd have to be Stryker. What's going on? It is Stryker. Because you're the opposite. <laughs> I don't know if I can be a good Stryker because, like you said, he is on level yeah. 11 of 10, mm -hmm. which is great. His yeah. energy level on the mic he is a true professional. He's a legend. Yeah. Booker and Striker and DJ Regulate. Yeah. He is great. He's just an awesome person. But yeah, I don't know if I could do a great striker. I think I'd be more of a booker. Yeah. So I don't know, man. We'd have to. <laughs> All right. We'd have to. All right. See. We'll switch it up. You're booker. I'm striker. <laughs> it is booker. Don't get FOMO. It is. All, oh, wait. I'm sorry. I'm doing booker. See? I'm doing booker. Yeah. I was about to go into booker's talk. Go ahead. You go. You start it. All right, it is Alt 98.7. We got Booker and Stryker here. Stryker, what's going on in the world? Well, to tell you the truth, Booker, I'm super excited about this mix that we're presenting here on Alt 98.7. For the first time, DJ Regulate, our producer and friend, has presented a top five Regulate mix. Really? All right, Regulate, let's go. Let's hear that. Let's go, baby. Can we forget about the things I said when I was drunk? Regulate.
What do you think? What was that? How was that? I th- we got a smattering of applause for it. I think we did pretty good on the fly. Oh, man. I don't on the know. Fly. Two I... Mexicans pretending to be two white jocks. Come on, man. I'm not saying it's not bad. Hey. Let's go, baby. If I could be half of what those guys have accomplished, right? I'd be happy, bro. Yeah, I would never get on air. They'd fire me in a second. <laughs> like, is this guy for real? <laughs> Lisa Warden be be calling the hotline like yeah yeah, like, yeah. what are you what are you doing your outro stick to producing yeah. <laughs> oh man well listen outside of work we were talking about um, you being you know with the with the girl and not seeing each other that you didn't have pets we talked a little bit about the movie right was that on pod i can't even remember that was, was that, off that, that was, was off. off pod right that was off pod yeah okay so let's go back to that real quick because mm-hmm. it is interesting that and i don't know can we talk about that can we talk about that your girl isn't really a fan of dogs i don't mind yeah is, I don't, is she going to mind <laughs> she won't mind okay. she won't even hear this <laughs> she'll probably yeah. la- no she'll probably tune in to it and, by the way and laugh sidebar on that yeah the fact that you're back on Thank mm-hmm. you for coming back on. I appreciate you having me as back being on. my guest after this rejection reel. Rejected. But I have to admit that, or I, would, I should say, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that you you being on the podcast brought in quite the number of listeners. Did it really? Yes. Not only on the podcast episode, but yeah. on IG. Remember, we collabed. Right now, since then. I've, I've kind of stopped doing the collab and forcing people to collab. I feel like, you know, if they want to, great. But mm-hmm. if I have to remind them and ask, and then I already send it and they don't accept it, 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 it also stings. It's like rejection yeah. all over again. Rejected. Uh, and it's happened quite a few times with guests that have been on this pod. I'm not going to name names. They know who they are. But you weren't one of them. And yeah. the fact that you collabed with me, it just, it brought in... Just a lot of eyes on on the podcast itself. Which was the goal that you wanted. That's right. right. You and know you helped I mean? me do that. So yeah. thank you for that. But yeah, no problem. We don't have to do that for this one. Mm. But I will say if we do, and we do it again, I think it's going to be a repeat, maybe if not more. Because people are still, to this very day, liking that post of the last episode you were on. Really? Uh, you should see it. It's we collabed. A, it's been like a year and some yeah. change. Yeah, at least. Yeah. So... To me, I'm like, wow, Regulate, he has a lot of fans. Like, people like this guy. I see why. <laughs> I would say friends more than fans. I don't think I have a lot okay, of well, fans. Okay, well, I would say you have a lot of good friends and supporters. Fo- yeah. Supporters, not fans, yeah. which is what the Brits call their their fans. They call them supporters. Yeah, that, I love fans. that. I love that word. Yeah. Um, I feel like I have a lot of friends and families, uh, fr- friends and family that support yeah. me and supporters is a much better word in my opinion because i don't think i have fans no i mean but fans is a fun word though you know, <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. oh wow i got fans like i get made fun of all the time like oh i'm one of your fans oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have fans though you have to because I, you're uh, on booker and striker uh, there's definitely right. people i don't know mm-hmm. um that and those you, are your biggest supporters. Remember, you know, there's that meme that goes, your biggest hater is, no, your biggest hater is somebody you know, your biggest supporter is a stranger. Yeah, there's definitely strangers. Right. And, uh, you know, I'll be like, regulate. And I'm like, regulate. Hey. I don't know you. Yeah, right? but you know, I'm always super polite. and. Yeah. But yeah, there's people definitely that I don't know. Uh, it's funny, like when people try to uh, come to visit me at gigs or, you know, get up to the dorm guy and uh, they're like, we're, we're with regulate. Oh, and, and well, this is a trick. Okay. And then I always tell them make sure to ask them what's regulates real name. If they know my name, I would fail that. <laughs> <laughs> and I work with you. <laughs> if they know my name, they're good. Let them uh, in. If they don't know my name, then Sorry. What if they get it close? They're like, uh, Emilio. Ed- Edwin. <laughs> Edwin. Ooh, Edwin. I know an Edwin. Do you? Yeah, yeah. From yeah. DJ City. Shout out to DJ Fino. Edwin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I always think that's funny when uh, there's people that try to name drop and, you know, there's not really a... Right. There's no connection. Mm-hmm. Do people have a nickname from you that you went to high school with that that really would only they would know? Like, for example, yeah. people call me Chris from high school a lot. So when people hit me up as Chris, I know 
oh, I know this person from high school or middle school even. Yeah. Because I went by Chris in those years. This is funny, man. I don't, I don't think anyone besides high, people are going to be like. <laughs> uh, is, it, is this uh, a Sketchomatic Show podcast nickname? Exclusive. <laughs> Go ahead. So in high school, I played football mm. all four years. I went to Linwood High. Um, majority of the football team were African American brothers. You know, I was one of the few Hispanics on the team, aside from the kicker, maybe like one lineman. Um, and so I was a right wide receiver, and I had moves like I my routes like were Mick on Jagger? point. Yeah, <laughs> and so my nickname in high school and all the high school people that I went to high school with, uh, no. My name was Salsa. Uh, the Salsa. Uh, salsa. Salsa. People would call me Salsa. Because, because you're spicy? Because my, 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 you know, the, the. Yeah, the moves, the moves. like when you do Salsa dancing. Yep. And when I was like on the football arms, field. Right. Yeah. You would do that to well, yeah, you dodge know, your opponents. Yeah. You'd but, fake them out. Like, like ju- what was known as juking when I was growing yes, up. Yes, sir. Ah. And salsa. because of the Hispanic heritage. They call him Edward Salsa Hands. Yeah, that was my nickname. And I'm not embarrassed by it at all. I just think it's funny that people are now hearing this. They didn't know. I would even combine it with your actual DJ name now, DJ Regulate. Mm -hmm. Regular Salsa. (laughs) Hot and mild and regular Salsa. Regular. (laughs) Or Regulate Salsa. Yeah, I'll take that. It's regulated. Yeah. Because it's so hot, it's regulated. (gasps) That's brand new. Mm, I like it. Well, are you still DJing for the Lakers LA Live? Yeah. Yeah. And how's that um, transpiring? We wrapped up season two. Because I know you got re-signed. Yeah. Right? Season two. The last time we talked, well, we were in the middle of season one or just finishing season one. Uh, we wrapped up season two. We The team obviously wasn't as successful right. as the previous season. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they went deeper into the playoffs last year, but still a great time. Of course. Fun. It's always a party. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. when we lose horrifically. Yeah. It's still like LA motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Gotta gotta meet a lot of the legends. Byron Scott. Wow. Uh Sasha the Machine. Will you check uh Robert Ori? Dude, that guy's dope. Yeah. Will you check? Yeah. That guy's dope. Yeah. I mean it's, super nice dude. Right. They're all nice. Yeah. They all nice because they, it, they what is it called? The, the workout, the running up and down the court like that, four times, three times, four times a week, is extremely exhausting. Like I play half court and I'm ready to die, bro. Yeah, playing full court, I, it's rough, dude. And people don't really. I think people forget how many, how hard it is, how exhausting it is on your body, your legs, your knees, especially when you're that fucking big. It's Man. so it's so easy to talk. Right. Like, oh, I could have done that. Uh, yeah. Come but. on. Come on, bro. I can't. I can't. Now, granted, back when I was playing half court games, I was drinking and smoking a lot. Cigarettes. Yeah. And it was like people were like, This is why you should quit. Because yeah. I was like on the bench dying like yeah. two minutes in. Uh, right. But now I could probably hold myself, I think, a bit a bit better. But um, yeah, so I was gonna say, going back to you being with the, the LA Lakers live, it always being a party. And meeting all these, you know, celebrities and, and and players and athletes and stuff. Are we coming back for a season three, despite the not so great season we had? Fingers crossed. I don't know the answer to that yet. No. Um, I am very hopeful. Uh, I feel like I've done a great job, and everyone there. Do we have to shout anybody out just to uh, give it, nah. make it make it a little bit more your like a little like? Hey, you know, you know. <laughs> I, uh, nah, I no, I don't think so. I think. I think my work speaks for itself mm-hmm. and um, it was a great time. I thought I was very professional and I did my work absolutely the right way. And, uh, and it showed on each game day and the crowd and just how I handled myself. So I think I will be there for season three. I hope so. And I, yeah. I think with the arrival of Bronny, <laughs> I think it would be, the right move to bring regulate on for that party yeah father and son regulate djing yeah for the live crowd yeah bro what it's just it's it's a whole new level this is 
unprecedented, right? Was there ever a father son duo first? Right, that's never first. been happened. It's never happened. It is history. I. How know, do you feel about that? What's your take on Bronny and and on the whole Lakers organization father and son situation? I was not a fan at first. A supporter. I was not a supporter. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm going to be honest, man. I'm going to be honest. Um, I just don't think it was a basketball move. Mm. It was just to fulfill that history and make LeBron happy. And, I mean, it is what it is. I'm 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 not the guy who has to make that decision. Right. And I know it's a tough decision. Yeah. So. does he earn, Did he earn it, though? Does he, does Bronny deserve that, in your opinion? Trust me, nobody's listening, so it doesn't matter what you say. It can't. It can't be the wrong answer. <laughs> Man, sketch. I'm gonna say there was probably better players out there that deserved it mm. more. But it is definitely a optics move. Right, yes, for Los oh, Angeles. Oh yeah, a thousand percent. But Bronny's uh, a good player, isn't he? he? He's not a bad player. Well, he had that health issue. He had that health scare. Elaborate. His, I'm not. I wasn't aware of that. So he. Uh, graduated high school and started playing for USC before the season started his, he had a heart. Um, I don't know if it was a stroke or heart issue. It wasn't like, what's his name? The Hamlin guy that collapsed on the it, football It might've been similar. He that, was that his name? Hamlin? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Very similar. Wow. Very that's scary. Similar. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. They're young. 18 years Come old. Come on. That's fucking, is it because of their size? You know? I think because they're going 110% every day. Like those guys are like, athletes are different now. You yeah. notice it now. When I was younger, athletes weren't as thoroughbred looking as they are now. Yeah. Meaning, these guys look like they're genetically grown. Like they're Photoshopped. Mm -hmm. And they're not Photoshopped. They're not filtered. Their bodies actually, you can cut vegetables on their stomach. Yeah. I remember guys like the fridge who played in NFL. This guy could eat like an entire rack of eggs for breakfast. And yeah. He wasn't like cut or he was big, but he wasn't like the rock or like Travis Kelsey. Right. He was just a big motherfucker. Right. Mm -hmm. That's how guys looked. Now guys are, like I said, they're thoroughbred horses. And I feel like because they're so thoroughbred, it takes a toll on their body way earlier. Do I agree. agree. Thank you. A thousand percent. I agree. Right. Um, you know, even in the long run, those knees, yeah, you man. know, like those, those fingers, mm. everything it's, it takes a Your toll. Achilles, yeah. heel, Achilles tendon. Yeah. I'm over here with Achilles tendonitis right now. Right now? And, and I'm just, man, I you don't... need some Advil? I got some Advil on me. <laughs> I feel I'm good. your best friend as you get into your older years. But I'm over here stretching mid gig. Right. You know what I mean? Cause do you run? I used to. Mm -hmm. And I, I stopped, I retired from hooping. Uh, I retired from jogging, uh, just in fear that I'd tear it. Yeah, man, I, I stopped jogging, but I still do long walks and I, I'm so tall and I walk so fast that to a regular, regular size person, <laughs> It's like kind of running. Yeah. But I got my meniscus in my right knee time to time tends to swell up if I start running. And that I'm just like, dude, I'm not dealing with that. I know I can run. And sometimes I'll just run across like the street just to get those that run in and I'll kind of run the block. But I'm like, nope, stop, because I know it'll tweak it eventually and if i'm way out there i'm a couple miles out i'm like no nah, i don't want to have to uber home fuck that so i just walk bro do you walk at all uh yes yeah uh not as much as i should right but i try to because walking is actually great it's the basics bro yeah, it's, it's the basics it I, really is i it's just great. try to stick to the basics i'm not trying to uh, what's the word i'm looking for Ex exhort myself what's that word um i think you're like Close right, right there. I'm not I know. Trying to I know what you're talking about. Exert. Exert. I'm not trying yeah. to exert myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I would jog, I would try to push myself to see how far I could run with with like when I'm like my veins are pumping battery acid. Mm -hmm. And if I stopped, I felt guilty. Or if I slowed down, it's like. And I see other guys just running for fucking miles, and I'm like, yeah, bro, I can't do that anymore. It fucks my whole shit up. And yeah. I don't. I'm not trying to kill myself. I'm not racing against anybody. I'm just trying to be healthy. Yeah. And I saw this guy on Instagram, Devin Fit something, and 
he's a very cut dude. This guy looks like he was in the movie 300. Okay. Very healthy black gentleman. Right. And he was like, just stick to the fucking basics. Look at the food packaging, see what ingredients are in there and just stick to the basic ingredient. That's what you want in working out. When you're on a treadmill, stop trying to exert yourself. Just fucking walk. Just walk. Mm -hmm. Enough with the, I'm going to climb this setting that's going to take me through the French Alps. Fuck that. Just walk on a flat surface yeah, for as long as you can, but don't even go as long as you can. Just enough. Yeah. And do some reps. Eight to 12 is enough. To, before you start feeling failure, right? right. Where you, you're, you can't do anymore. Right. And then wait and then do another. If, if you get past 12 with no issues, then add more weight. But if you're going eight to 12 and you're starting to feel that failure in between those, that's normal. Stick to that. And I'm like, oh, so I guess I am doing it right. But I can't gain weight, bro. How about you? Do you gain weight fast? <laughs> Are you kidding? And, and what do you do to curtail that? I... And currently the most I've ever weighed in my entire really? life. Really? Yeah. Dude, you look thin. I, I broke 200. What? Yeah. Well, let's compare. I'm going to go back to the IG post I'm that we have. I'm 200 right now. I'm, that's the peak weight. John Peak? That I've ever been at. Okay. I'm looking at our, I'm going to pull up our Instagram post here from when you were on. And I'm going to compare. I probably look the same. No, did you actually look a little bigger here? You look thinner now. <laughs> really? A little bit. A little uh, bit. Not. I'm not saying like it's night yeah, and day. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying right, you, right, you right. look a little fuller here. Yeah. And now you look like you've, you're... Well, I fluctuate, man. Like, yeah. so um, we might have talked about this last podcast episode. Uh, I give up drinking right. every year for 47 days for Lent. Mm-hmm. Um, and... During that time, my weight goes way down. I lose about 10, oh, 50, yeah. 10 15 pounds. You could pounds. lose 20 pounds easy from not drinking. Yep. The it, calories from... The carbs and calories. Yeah. There's carbs in beer and alcohol. Mm-hmm. Not all, all, all alcohol, but beer has carbs in it, especially the dark beer. It right. has a lot of carbs in it. It's like you're drinking bread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so whenever I cut that out, mm-hmm. I will lose 10, 15 yeah. pounds. And little by little, when I'm done... When I'm done with Lent, uh, I start getting it all back. Now, you go right back to drinking. I wouldn't say like I don't go back full fifth gear. Right. You know, I, you know gradually get back into and it. Where and where do you gain the most weight? Is it in the gut? Uh, in the gut. That's where I gain. Now, the problem is, you see, with you, you're an average size build of a man, right? Yeah. yeah. Me, I'm really thin and the problem with really thin dudes that are tall like me Mm -hmm. that gain weight i don't gain muscle mass i get a gut so i have like the skinny body with like this belly it's so gross bro (laughs) (laughs) it's so fucking unsightly dude uh, that's every dude man yeah but it's it's worse for skinny dudes how tall are you six one okay but i look even taller because i'm bald and I'm skinny. Mm. It's I, not. Go ahead. I'm fine nine. Yeah. Five ten on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> on a good day, I get that extra. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I look shorter and stumpier because mm. of my weight. No, I wouldn't say stumpy. You, 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 you look. You're just smaller than I am. Yeah. But you're not stumpy. Uh, stumpy. Is, I know a couple of stumpy people here. You're not stumpy. You're, uh, you're average size dude. You're just yeah. an average size five nine five ten dude. But I'm like 155, which I think I'm like 150 now because I stopped drinking. So that thin and that tall, it's not good. Yeah, it's just not good. You got to gain weight, and I I try and I try. I've even contemplated. Maybe I should start drinking again. No, just but to no. gain weight. Yeah, yeah just to no, get because I was actually no. I looked healthy when I was drinking. People yeah. were like, "Wow, you look good, Sketch." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I feel like shit all the time, hung over." You, you've tried all like the uh, the pastas and breads. And, yeah, I tried all that. I gave and, up all that stuff because it goes straight to my gut, mm-hmm. and I get this belly. I'm actually starting to lose it. I can tell it's starting to go down because I stopped eating bread. Yeah, uh, I wanted to try steroids. Really? Because Rogan talks about steroids. There's a there's a way to use them, and there's a way not to right. use them. Not right. everybody's balls are going to shrink. Not everybody's going to get roid rage. Yeah, you got to use it sparingly and right. Mm-hmm. 
And not all of the steroids out there are all, I think they're better now than they were back years ago when you probably would get more apt to being roided out and roid rage and your ball shrinking. Right. All that shit. And you're not trying to hit home no, runs. No, I just want to gain like, yeah. a, like 20 pounds. Yeah. That's it, of muscle. I feel like if I can gain 20 pounds of muscle, I would be so content with this receding hairline and this face as long as my body reflected that mm. and it's it's like fucking impossible to get there bro yeah it's like i swear but i also don't have the money to afford steroids i don't know where to get them i don't i've never done it but is, is there a legal there is oh, okay there's doctors you can go to that really? will prescribe it to you and you have to take it accordingly dang never knew that but i don't know how to do it and i i feel like i wouldn't know what to do yeah but i want to try it i mean i want to try to gain some weight so by the time i'm like 47 ish I'm like better and people see it. They're like, damn, sketch. You got big. You know what I mean? I want to hear that. Everybody's like, man, you eat like a bird. And I'm like, I just don't like eating in front of people. I like to wait until I'm alone. And then I gorge myself like a lion <laughs> and I'm just sleep it off. So you're like the opposite of everyone nowadays. Everyone oh. wants the o Ozempic. Yes. Bro, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Dude. Because Ozempic, I was just talking to somebody earlier today at Fresh Brothers when I was walking home from my walk and I stopped by Fresh Brothers to get a fucking salad, bro. <laughs> and we were talking about Ozempic and I was like, I wish there was an an opposite Ozempic that didn't, it didn't make you thin. It had the opposite. It made you big. Yeah. Or it, not big, but it just made you hold on to weight and water more. Right. I've tried creatine. I do uh, that muscle milk powder, protein shakes. Yeah. In the right light at the right angle, I'm all, right. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of see that it's there, <laughs> but it's not enough. Right. I need a fucking boost, bro. I wish I could take some of your weight or some of those Ozempic people's weight and transfer it over to me. <laughs> Take it, please, Where man. Is that? I don't Where's know, the man. technology? I wish you could take 20 pounds off of, of what I, I have. Yeah, I would take that in some of your luscious locks of oh, hair, bro. Man. God I, damn. I cut off like eight inches. Oh, my God. I just noticed. Yeah. Dude. But you still got the Jesus long length. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah still to my shoulders. Yeah. But I... I, I How that, did it feel? Uh, did you feel like Samson? Did lighter. you feel like you... You lost knowledge. No, and, I felt no. lighter. Yeah, I felt it does lighter. Feel lighter. Yeah. Imagine if you sh have you ever shaved your head? Uh, in high school, when you were salsa, ones? the football player. <laughs> yeah, when yeah. I had to wear the helmet. You were Edward Salsa hands. Um, yeah, I've been I've been clean shaved. That feels the craziest when yeah. you go from your type of hair, head full of hair, to shaving your head. It's like holy fuck. Yeah, I haven't done that. Yeah. No, I didn't go from. Full head to shave. Yeah. But I have been shaved. I've had everything, man. I've had a You've had a mohawk. Fade? Did you have a fade? I've had a fade. Yeah. I had a mohawk. Had a rat tail. A mohawk? Yeah, I've had you a mohawk. You should bring the mohawk back. I had corn rolls. But that was high school and college. That was... I think you should do it again. I have the hair for it. You should do it. It's plus it's summertime. Yeah. Corn rolls. Keeps it nice and fresh. My girlfriend will probably be like, what? <laughs> You're, okay, so I'm glad you brought up your girlfriend. Yeah. Let's segue back to what we were talking about before we sidebarred completely yeah. into that last part. The dog situation, we were talking about the movies off air, right? Mm -hmm. Off pod, I'm sorry. And I was like, you know, Reg, I think what it may take for your girl to appreciate dogs more and maybe even want to get one is a dog has to like save her life. <laughs> <laughs> right stage it let's let's stage it um yeah. maybe not just stage it but i'm not saying save your life in a in like a desperate act of death defying feet or something mm -hmm. it's more of like maybe a dog saves her from feeling bad or it saves her from now nah, let's go back to the death defying act it's better <laughs> because it ties into the movie right so the, yeah there's this why. movie called that's bullethead why. that i just recently watched it was just on one of the hbo channels and i i had never heard of it it had adrian brody john malkovich and one of the culkin kids i can't remember his name and they're robbing this warehouse this is the only part i know and there's a dog in the fucking warehouse that looks like a guard dog but i don't think it is i think it's also being kept prisoner there or it got abandoned there but this dog i said to reg if suge knight was a dog this is what this dog would look like it was fucking terrifying big i don't even know if suge knight is the right analogy I mean, that's what i picture i picture like big 
just scary and intimidating dog. It looked like it had taken steroids. It had the pointy ears. It was like a pit bull. Yeah. And it looked like it was wearing, it was like that fur that was like camouflage. You know what I'm talking about? It's like mm-hmm. black and like almost dark green. It would look, it looked terrifying. This movie where they talk about these dogs and there's a few dog scenes in it and it's very action packed and all that stuff. But this dog tears some people apart and Adrian Brody and his crew reflect on if they're cat people or dog people and amidst seeing this dog fuck everybody up. They're still like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm a dog person. I'm a dog person. <laughs> and it goes into this whole thing, how a dog saved Adrian Brody's character from certain death. Right. And I'm like, wow, well maybe, maybe That's that has to happen take. for Mrs. Regulate. Uh, I mean, it would need to take some type of miracle. In right. my opinion. Yeah. Because no, no video, no TikTok video sells her. No, nothing, nothing. Nothing works. Nothing. I mean, because if you think about it, and no knock to cats or any other pets that exist, but dogs lead the blind. Dogs <laughs> sniff for contraband. Yeah. Dogs rescue people in earthquakes. Yeah. Dogs are pretty much unconditional lovers. Like, no matter how many times you forget to feed or give them water or take them on walks, they're always right there for you. Most of them. I'm not saying that there isn't a few bad dogs in the bunch. There are, but it's also how those dogs were raised and abandoned and also traumatized. It all weighs into it just like people, right? Mm-hmm. But dogs, dogs are military. I wish we could have a dog, but on the other hand, there's times where I'm like, no, that's a lot of responsibility. Especially when you get a pup. Yeah. yeah. They're like a little baby. Oh yeah. You can't leave them. Yeah. You got to keep your eyes on them 24-7. Does your girl like any pets that she would like to have? Is she a cat person? <laughs> she is not a cat person. We have fish. <laughs> oh, that's right. You have little fishies. What kind of fish? Beta fish? What kind of fish? Uh, we have some guppies. We have a uh, small shark. I forgot what kind of shark. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait. Sorry, sorry. I just kind of glossed over that. You said a shark. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of shark? I can't think of what it, kind of shark it is. Is it like a a baby tiger shark or something? It's orange. orange. And it, it's maybe the size of a dollar. Wow. Is it going to get bigger? I think they get bigger depending on the size of the tank. We have a 20-gallon tank. Let's see. This says it's a Trump shark. No, I'm kidding. It's... um. <laughs> What is it? what is this called? It's called uh what kind of sharks are orange? Yeah. Orange spotted cat shark. It, Does this look like it here? I'm gonna, I just googled it for orange. you. Mm, it looks like this one on the right here. Sunburst mm. orange shark. Ooh, sounds like a soda. <laughs> Ooh, sunburst. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. So I think Damn. it does get bigger depending like you know if you had a 50 right. gallon tank it might get bigger but it's not big enough to attack you no right? no 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 no. will no, it attack no. the other fish yeah ah uh, what's the, the shark's name uh we do not have a name for that one oh, surprisingly God. enough how long have you had him uh, a couple years is it a girl guy we don't, we don't know ah well you got to give her it a girl guy name like stacy or tracy or yeah well, yeah, a lot of them have like people names. Yeah, yeah, I like but we that. We don't, we don't have a name. Let's think of one. Okay, how about I got you. Henny? Henny? Yeah, because Henny is your hat that you're wearing right now, short Hennessy. for Hennessy. Yep. Hennessy is not orange, but it can be in the certain light. It's like brown orange in the sun if you hold it right to the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And can you mix orange juice with Hennessy? No, that's uh, disgusting. Pineapple. There you go. That'll make it orange. Yeah. Henny. <laughs> Penny the shark. I'm going to let her know tonight. Play a little Jaws music real quick. Yeah. Dun, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe a, a, a remix, a trap version. <laughs> Penny the shark. Yeah. I like that. Right? Yeah. I'm going to let her know. I'm going to text you when I let her know and see what she says. So, Penny doesn't get bigger other than the dollar size of mm-hmm. a dollar bill, right? Yeah. And that's about as big as Henny's going to get. We're not sure if Henny's the name, but we're just going to call it Henny now. Yeah. Because we don't even know if it's a girl or guy. Mm -hmm. Or what its pronouns are. Right. Oh, God. Um, (laughs) But Henny, you've had her for for a year. Couple years. Couple years. And what's that's the only pet that 
the significant other regular. What's your girl's name? Rachel. Rachel. Rachel regulate. See, that's yeah. fucking dope. Yeah. Um, Rachel's not into dog. I'm not into pets with fur or anything like that. Nope. No, sir. Never had a pet. She had a dog when she was a kid, but nothing traumatizing that I know of. That you know of. Yeah. That's the key line right here. Maybe yeah. something did happen. I don't think maybe, so. Or maybe the dog Her, died and she's just I, too, it's too painful to lose another one. That's how I feel. She's from the East Coast. Mm. I've visited her family a million times. What part of these? New York? Uh, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. And I've talked to her parents, talked to her brothers. No one's ever made any mention of any traumatizing dog experiences. Maybe she just doesn't want to have to take care of it. It could just come down to that. It is a lot of it's work. It's a lot of work. But dude. no, it's, it's not that. Mm. Because mm. whenever there's dogs around, she kind of is like, uh, what's the word? She's not scared, but she's like, don't touch me. Really? Yeah. Mm. She doesn't ever want to pet it. Really? Even yeah. if it's super cute and small and it's loving? <laughs> Even so. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Mm -mm. Wow. That's really interesting and kind of unfortunate because dogs are dope. But I, yeah. again, I know a few people that don't like dogs either. They just don't, not that they hate them. They're just not she dog doesn't, people. She doesn't yeah. hate dogs. Right. It's not one of those, you know, get them away from me. She's just like, I don't want to touch it. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I'd like to get her take on this. She probably could give you an, an elaborate explanation. That would be an exclusive. Yeah. You could Rachel. do a whole episode. I think so. The fear of dogs <laughs> and why do, why do you have it? Yeah. Mailman, I can kind of understand, but you know. They deal with it on the And here's daily. the best dog, I think, that if you were to get a dog, let's say in some hypothetical way, Rachel comes along and she's like, babe, you know what? I know you want a dog. We should adopt one from the pound. And you guys find like... Not a pup, but like a teenager golden retriever. Goldens are like love Chill. sponge. Mm -hmm. That's like they are most of them. Not right. saying there isn't a few. I've seen a few that are real aggressive. Right. But the ones that I, the majority of goldens are like the best fucking dogs. They're just, they're so loving. Yeah. And they just like kind of flop around. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's the best. You see them laughing and smiling. Yeah. And, and it seems like they're actually yeah, like they're human smiles. People. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Why not? I mean, I think she would want, if she, I mean, if we're going to speak hypothetical mm -hmm. here, she'd want a smaller one. Oh, like overhead compartment size. Yeah. Not, yeah. not, not, no, 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 not no. Like no. Not like a pocket the, pool. Not the tiny, right. not tiny. Not Paris Hilton size. No. Right. Somewhere in the small mid. Like a Shih Tzu. Yeah. Yeah. Shih Tzus think, are dope too. I think that's the size that she can bear. Shih Tzus are very well behaved. They yeah. can be very well behaved. I, yeah. I, I knew a Shih Tzu, Jackie, and he was, he would just sit there and he, we'd let him out and he'd wait for you to come out to take him on his walk. He'd just sit there. Yeah. And he just, and other dogs are walking by. And when that happens, usually dogs run after him. Ah! Yeah. Right. But he just knew. He was just like, no, I'm waiting for you, homie. Yeah. I was like, damn, that's fucking dope. <laughs> uh, did we teach him that? I don't know. He just seemed to have it innately. Yeah. I think. I, I love think it when dogs way. have that already built in. Yeah. Yeah. They're just great. Like, oh, this is the chillest it's dog. It's almost like they've been here before. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah. yeah I know this whole routine. Yeah. I'm going to go outside, right? All right. Let's go. <laughs> Her I'll own. remind you. Yeah, yeah dude. I've, I've seen a few of those dogs and I've, I've been fortunate. Uh, others raise. you have to train though. Yeah. And Especially the ones that are like from the pound that are somewhat traumatized from whatever. And they're just, you got to sit with them for like sometimes weeks, months mm -hmm. to get them to, you got to watch episodes of Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer. Cesar. Cesar. And we'll do the little ch -ch 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 -ch. That shit works, bro. Yeah. I've done it. I've trained a dog to sit and to go outside just by going Ch -ch -ch, and it fucking works. Yeah. I'm not all the time, but it worked on this one dog who was a rescue dog and he got it right away. He was like, kind of looked at me. He was like, Oh, you mean this sit? Yeah. And I was like, Oh, I just did it. That's dope. Thanks. Cesar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's dope. Well, listen, where are we at? Oh, an hour. Not bad. An hour chilling. Um, there's been, I got to tell, we got to talk about just what's happening right now with the, you know, the whole Trump thing that happened. I, I'm not trying to get political, mm. but on a human level, okay, I don't want to see anybody get shot on live right. television. No one does. As much as you may want to hate the guy, 
I just don't think any of that shit is necessary. It's too excessive. Mm -hmm. When it happened to JFK, Martin Luther King, obviously he wasn't a president, Martin Luther King and, and Malcolm X, but they were still very political figures that changed this country and the world. Right. right? Those guys took bullets. RFK took a bullet. There's been too many bullets, too many, too much of that shit. And when I saw on Instagram that Trump, there was a, a attempted assassination, but nobody knew what it was. It had just happened 12 minutes prior. I jumped on YouTube TV so fucking fast and just forwarded through the speech and then got to the part. And I was like, whoa, man. And immediately I thought about his kids. You know, it's scary, bro. Regardless of the Republican shit, whatever, all the fucking documents, I don't care. Like, this is human level here. Yeah. And who's shooting at him? All these things came into play. And I'm like, what if that dude did die? I think a civil war would have broken out. Bro. I agree. Right? I agree. I think he would have been a martyr for those people and they would have, yeah, you know, ran through, uh, run through a brick wall for him. I mean, it was pretty scary. And when he got back up yeah, and you hear him say, like, let me get my shoes. They, t the secret service tackled him. So, or put him down, got him down so fucking fast and so hard yeah. that it knocked him out of both his shoes, bro. That's scary, man. It's yeah. just that, that, and it all happened in 12 seconds. And in those 12 seconds, it seemed like it lasted for minutes, bro. Yeah. When I rewatched it, I was like, and of course they kept replaying it in different angles. And, but I was like, man, how scared was he in those moments, bro? I was just about to say, I bet you it got real for mm. him. Like it definitely brought him down to earth. Yeah. And, you know, as cocky as that man is, mm -hmm. he was like, he was I'm, scared, bro. Yeah. But also yeah. defiant, but the adrenaline is pumping at that right. moment. And right. at 78 years old, he's, he must have seen like his life flash yeah. in the moment of the bullet whizzing by, which they caught on camera that I saw the bullet. Oh, you could see, see it going through the air. Really? And when he puts his hand up, you could just see there's like this facial, like uh, he did like this reactional face facial facial movement where it's like like where you do that and i could see that from the side of when they were sh uh, the camera was for lack of a better word shooting him right mm -hmm. and then you see him turn to the right and him go right which he normally does when he talks everybody knows it yeah. goes, right but this is a different this is a fucking scared and i I was like, get down. Like, I'm saying like, get down. And it almost took him a, a second to fucking get down. Yeah. And for the other guys, his secret service to fucking it jump on like him. It felt like a long time right? for them to get on stage. And what's crazier is the Trump ease, the crowd. They, they, they no didn't fucking left. move, dude. They barely moved, We were bro. talking about that today. Like, Yo. people just stayed they just kind of ducked a little yeah there was one woman right behind trump right behind trump's if i was if i'm trump sorry to say that but if i'm trump it was to his left or yeah yeah to his left behind his left there was a woman like directly behind him with a an iphone three lens camera and i'm like she got everything she's got to have the best shot there and i've yet to see any footage from that angle but even her, she was like holding her phone. She kind of just, just barely duck. Meanwhile, there's a dog pile right in front of her and she's just kind of like barely ducking. I got it. It's can't help but compare. What would have happened if it was a democratic crowd? If that had happened at a Biden rally? Yeah. What would, do you think it would, everybody just ran out screaming? I don't know. It's tough to say. Right? I don't know. Not trying to call demos no. like pussies. I'm just saying like, <laughs> dude, you know, people are a little more sensitive on the demo side. Yeah. I don't sure. know. I couldn't tell you what either side what was going through their head real quick sidebar and a quick shout out to uh dj demo one of the homies oh, who passed yeah, away recently RIP, man i just it popped into my head as i was saying demo and i was going to get to that later on towards the end of the podcast but since we you know i just said demo i just felt you know what let's close out the trump thing mm. the shit is fucking wild uh, yeah it was I, I know he doesn't deserve that you no know, one let does. the fucking man run let him do his shit if he wins, he wins. This is how it is. Yeah. If he loses, well, for him, that's not how it is. But, you know, it's like the guy's fucking entertaining. I'll tell you that much. I'm not I'm not <laughs> voting for him. I'm not. But at the same time, I'm like, bro, I, every time I'm like, I got to hear what he's saying. I got it. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, bro. I agree. The we, time we're living in yep. with AI 
Trump. What else am I missing? Uh, man. Radio, podcasts, like radio in this stage where we're at in radio. We've been in radio for quite some years, you and I. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm older than you, you've traveled the same road of radio, producing, production, DJing, all that shit. Yeah. Radio is somewhat of a, a dying breed. Yep. And some won't admit that. They're like, oh, it's still as strong as ever. Uh, okay, okay. I'm not going to knock you, but I'm going to say that that's not totally accurate either. Mm -hmm. But podcasts are on the, on the come up. My podcast, maybe not so much, but it's still fun to do. But I feel like, where are we going? Where is this all going to lead? Everything that's happening. It's, it's scary. Right. It's also exciting. And completely new unprecedented completely like Bronny and lebron on the same team <laughs> <laughs> oh man i still don't know how to feel about that but um right. <clears throat> now i feel you man we are in a wild wild time right now right and uh i don't know it makes you think if i ever want to have kids in this era that's another thing bro yeah how do you feel about having children now uh, still feel the same. I don't know if Which I want to bring them into this kind of world, man. Are you and Miss Rachel, is she interested in possibly bringing a small regulate into the world? Uh, yeah. Really? I, if I had to say so, I think she would love to be a mother. Are you planning on marrying? Um, I don't know if I... <laughs> <laughs> is this a is this a sketcho show podcast wedding exclusive um, exclusive uh, has it, how do you say it in espanol exclusive exclusive yeah um i don't know man i don't have an answer for that mm -hmm. I, we've been together for a very long time and i'm sure everyone including her parents my parents our siblings our friends I'm going to put all. you in the hot seat, bro. Oh, put yeah. In I'm, in the, I'm in the hot seat Ooh. right now, dog. Um, yeah, I just... Um, for me, it was more so wanting to be financially secure, mm, yeah. stable. Yeah. Um, having to go through COVID a couple years of that, not really knowing where that income was going to come. Oh, yeah, bro. That's right. When you kind of got here, right? Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, it's always n uncertainty. Uncharted territory. Right, right. Right. The child thing, the financial thing. <sighs> Where do you pull that money from? And now I know when people, two people combine their finances, it's like two companies merging. Right. To bring that new life in, or even just to start their new lives together. <clears throat> right. Mm -hmm. Or, I guess in your case, continuing their lives together, but as husband and wife, are you interested in going down the husband and wife route? Are you happy? Are you, Edward, content with being just the way you are with, with Rachel? Are you cool? Just like, you're not worried about being married. Not saying you won't have kids with her, but you don't need to marry her. For me, mm -hmm. the title of marriage, the... I've never really felt that was necessary. It's just a piece of paper. That's what I've always felt. Yeah. But I mean, it's a government contract. Everyone else is going to tell me different. Well, especially in the Latino community. Yeah. It's like, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can be perfectly content mm -hmm. with what we're doing, where we're at. Um, if we continue to grow and without having a ring or having to spend 30 grand on a wedding you know that's me that's the average <clears throat> cost of a wedding just a yeah. regular uh yeah. regular wedding yeah. is 30k mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. for a party and to show all the people hey like you may kiss the bride <laughs> and then the ring that's would another... rachel be down just to get married like privately uh i don't know i don't know we have a ton of friends right you'd have to have a big wedding you'd have to it's you know i have 40 aunts and uncles <whistles> and that's not including cousins damn you know and that's just my side rachel you you know what i mean like <laughs> there'd be at least 200 people at this wedding yeah right and then you feel bad about the people who don't make the cut yeah you know? and then that also ruins some friendships it really yeah. does it yeah. really does like 
if you're telling me I have to pick 200 people, there's going to be people that don't make it. Yeah. And that's just the reality and of it. And that's fine. But you know what? That's that's the part of, I think, especially in today's temperature of relationships and friendships and the ghosting and not trying to resolve anything. If you guys have a, like, for example, let's say, hypothetically, I'm your boy for years, longer than we've known each other now. Right. And you have this wedding and you don't invite me. Am I going to hold it against you and never talk to you again? Some people do that. Yep. I know people here that have done that. Yep. They don't talk to their friends anymore. Friends that they've had since like middle school. And I'm like, but here's the problem that how I see it. I'm not married. I've been engaged twice. I didn't even get to the planning the wedding part before Mm -hmm. the the, the engagement was off. (laughs) But I thought about it. And something I learned from listening to Stern and listening to this one guy, Rasan Rogers, who was talking about this exact topic, who hosts the wrap up show on Howard Stern. Right. And he was saying, dude, the wedding is about you, not your friends. It's about you and you and your wife or soon to be wife alone. And that's Mm -hmm. it. Like whoever you invite, that's who gets invited. People trying to hold that against you, no matter how long the relationship is, is not cool. It's not their right to do that because it's your day. Yeah. And if I don't make the cut, then I'm still going to get you a gift and wish you well. And I think some people want to be invited to weddings But when the day comes, they go, fuck, why did I say I was going to go to this shit? (laughs) You think so? I think so. I think some people just want, they want the invite. Right. But they don't want to follow through with dressing up, showing up on time, bringing a gift, doing all the dancing, reception, the mingling. Like some people just don't want it, but they want to feel included. Right. And those are the people you got to avoid. Yeah. So... I mean, if it was up to me, Mm -hmm. we're speaking hypothetically, Mm -hmm. I'd be perfectly happy with parents, grandparents, siblings, nephews, nieces. Intimate. Family only. That's it. And the guys, Booker and Stryker. They officiate. (laughs) Let's go, baby. (laughs) Right? Imagine. That would be dope. Yeah. Hey, it's Alt 98.7, uh, yeah. Booker, and we're officiating... Don't get FOMO. Edward and Rachel's wedding. And Stryker, what do you think? Well, we're really <laughs> excited to be here at the backyard of Edward and Rachel here on Alt 98.7. Yep, that's perfect. That's a Stryker <laughs> break Steve right there. Right? Yeah. Booker and Stryker and DJ Regulate. Yeah. Well, that's all hypothetical. We It may or may not happen, but you're totally content being... Just keeping the way things are, the, they are now, and maybe even just getting a dog. That would probably send you over the top, right? If You'd we be happy get a about dog, that. yeah, that'd yeah. be dope. But uh, that probably won't happen. It'd be cool if you got the dog. Rachel says, "Yeah, you can get a dog, Edward." Okay, and you get the dog, and then like a year later, she's all, "Okay, we're getting married now." And then the dog is like your best man. <laughs> look, all right, sketch. Look, that was great that you just brought that up. Go ahead. That might be a nice negotiating tactic, right there. It is. It's pretty like, com- hey, a compromise. You want a dog? Yeah. Well, I, I want a wedding. Give it, yeah. yeah. I want to be your wife. <laughs> yeah. And the, but the dog, you know, you see those those videos on Instagram and social that the dog is like dressed up in a little tux. Yeah. And he's walking with the ring. With the I ring. can see that for you. <laughs> or whatever dog you choose. Let's say it's a Shih Tzu, an overhead compartment sized dog. The little dog comes wa- you know, yeah. waddling down the aisle and it has the ring or whatever. Yeah. Little flowers. Wow. Oh, oh, it would be so sweet. <laughs> right? And then the guys are there, Booker and Stryker. We'll, yeah. s- we'll see, Rach. That might be a compromise. Why not? It's not like you, like you said, you guys have been together for a long time. How Ten. long, can I ask? Ten years. Ten years. That's a decade. Yeah. It's good to use that word. It's strong. Decade. Yeah. In a way, you kind of already are married. There was this thing called common law marriage in California. It doesn't exist anymore. Right. After 10 years, yeah. right? So yeah. you two are technically, if it still existed, would be common law marriage. It doesn't. I checked. It doesn't exist. It doesn't. <laughs> but we can say metaphorically yeah. that it's that's how it is for you two. Yeah. And maybe it would sway her to go, okay, you can get a, we can get a dog. What kind of dog would you want to get if Ooh. it did happen? I don't know, man. That's a tough, tough question. Do you want a manly dog that can guard you, or do you want something you can carry around? I think I've always been used to those big manly dogs. We grew up with a German Shepherd, 
a Rottweiler <laughs> and a Doberman. Oh yeah, those are fucking fighting dogs. <laughs> yeah, but they were they were not right. No. Yeah, they weren't. You know, but they're scary. Wa- they weren't Michael Vick yeah. type dogs. Oh. You, you know. Yeah, yeah, but those dogs, like just the mere sight of them. Yep. It's like, oh, it makes you think, like, is it friendly? Yeah. Friendly? <laughs> yeah. Immediately. Yep. Especially with the pointy ears. Whew, man. Yeah. I, I love dogs, bro, but I'll I'll second guess. Not saying that they're immediately labeled like, oh, that's a bad dog because it's a pit bull. Pit bulls are some of the most loving dogs ever, but they get a bad rap just right. because they got big heads and big jaws and shit. Yeah. And they've, some of them have done some pretty heinous shit. But mm-hmm. again, it goes back to how the dogs are raised and- you know, it's a reflection of their human owner. Yep. Those dogs are dope, man. And they can protect you. And most criminals avoid the dog the house with dogs. That's what I, it is. that's what I picture. Yeah. Right? That's what I imagine in my head. If I were to have a big dog, they'll protect the house, they'll yeah. protect her. Yeah. But not to say that I'm not opposed to. A little you know. dog can do that too. As long as they bark noise. It's mm-hmm. all about the noise. Yeah. The little rah, rah, rah. criminals are like, ah, fuck. Fuck yeah. that. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. You know, most yeah. of them, I think, unless they get all smart and they're like, let's just give it a treat, you know, <laughs> and then they take all your fucking DJ equipment and shit. And no. then they, they steal Henny, the orange shark. No. No. <laughs> oh my God. So what's next, um, Mr. Regulate? What is the next move for Edward in both your professional life and and your personal life. As we talked off pod, you and I were, is the right word fomenting? Is that the right word? Or uh, lamenting? I don't know. I'm trying to steal steal something from Stephen A. Smith. He always sounds really smart when he says shit like that. But we were speaking about the frustrations that we both share working where we work, doing what we do. Yeah. Uh, I'm not complaining. It just comes with the territory. It's par for the course being in radio and iHeart radio in our positions. Uh, it's difficult in production where I work in producing where you work. It's just the, the company itself is tough. It's a tough environment to work in. I agree, but I'm grateful for it. Keeps me on my toes, even though I'm at home and I'm comfy at home in my pyjamas. <laughs> I'm in my pyjamas, bro. I would love to produce the show from Home. I don't know, remote. man. I envy those who still get to come in because it, 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 it takes something away from you. You feel a little excluded and left out from all the activities and all the little perks that come. Oh, we're having such and such in the red room. Mm. And they invite me. Yeah. But then if I show up, they're like, what are you doing here, Sketch? What are you doing here? What are you doing? Shouldn't you be at home? What are you doing here? Everybody, people I don't even know are running down the hallway. Hey, are you Sketch? Yeah. What's your name? Hey, I'm Brandon. Oh, nice to meet you. Are you new here? Yeah. So what are you doing here? And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what? What is that? I don't if, understand. <clears throat> if I didn't have to two and a half hour commute, mm. you know what I mean? Yes, sir. That makes it more realistic for you to work at home. But the guys love you. And yeah. They want you here. Oh, that's what I'm saying. You're part of the show, man. Being in the studio with those two guys yeah. every day makes it worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, there with the pros, there's cons. Uh, there's always cost for yeah. everything. Yeah. The two hour travel time in traffic in LA, 405, whatever freeway you take, it's, there's no way around it. There's just no way around it. I and mean, yeah. I know people that live in Irvine that have to come up here. <laughs> during the, I was, I was during talking to someone day. today saying they come from Anaheim. Yeah. What? Yeah. Let them work at home. Yeah. I live across the street. Yeah. I tell Peak, bro, I live across. The, I don't call him bro, but you know, Peak, I live across the street. And he's like, oh, I know, Sketch. We're going to, we're going to get you back in soon. <laughs> and I'm like, when? <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, and then he walks away. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> or he takes a call. Trump closes I gotta the door. go. I gotta go. Uh, sketch. <laughs> uh, Caitlin will fill you in. Caitlin. <laughs> so, um, what? Yeah, man. I, I mean, I, I'm super grateful for everything that I've experienced here yeah. and all the things that I've learned, the people I've met. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like this company is going through some tough times. Yes, sir. And I don't know what to expect uh, the future to bring. It's uncertain. Yeah. And so it's people, not just you and I, it's people that are way up higher too, that have even more obligation 
that are probably carrying a massive cross to bear. Mm. And they have to thug it out because they have families and kids and wives and husbands and shit. And their whole lives revolve around this place. Yeah. Bringing in their livelihood, their income. Yeah. And for me, I mean, I, I don't have a wife. I don't have a girlfriend. Are you kidding me? I get, I'm too busy getting rejected. <laughs> rejected. I, I said that too. Luckily, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have kids. I don't have a mortgage. You know what I mean? You have an orange shark. Yeah. I got to just buy some fish, some, some food for, to feed my fish. Yeah. For that's, Henny. Yeah. That's it. What do you feed Henny, by the way? Um, man, I don't know what it's called. Just fish food. Fish food. It's like chum for little sharks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but as far as you personally and, and work wise, and we were talking on DM, you know, we share the same kind of feeling of like, how long is this going to last and what's next? Mm -hmm. Where are we going? And do we, do we exit first or do we wait for it till the wheels fall off? Yeah. My thing is I usually stick around till the wheels fall off until they rip me out of there. And recently I, because of my reeling from rejection and what binge watching shows, I got into this show suits on Netflix. You seen suits? Yeah. Yeah. I just started watching and I'm just barely finished the episode episode one, which is like a full movie. It's like 90 minutes long, but in that episode and Tony Sanchez, my manager, Theo Tony, who's like everybody's Theo here at iHeart. He always raves about suits. He's like, Sketch, amigo, you have to watch suits. Have you watched suits yet? I'm like, no, 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 Tony. I haven't sketch. Watch it. It's like here. It's like here. I'm like, what do you mean? It's here. I thought those, that show was about like a law firm. He's like, yeah, it is. But the way this shit happens, it's exactly like here. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to watch that. He's like, trust me, it's good. And I was like, all right. So over the weekend, I started watching there. Actually, I started watching over 4th of July weekend. And man, a couple of those lines in that episode, I was like, damn, this is I heart. It's close to home. It's close, real close, man. And there's a line where it's like this grandma is given the main character. I already forgot his name, but she, he's like, I want to quit. He says, I want to quit. And his grandmother is in the hospital or on hospice or whatever. Right. She's in bed, but she's still coherent. And she was like, you know, I made a promise to your parents when they died, or I made a promise to myself, but to your parents as well, that no matter what happens, I'm going to be there for you. And you promised that if you got this position, that the only way you'd leave is if they rip you out of there. And I was like, damn, I kind of teared up. I was like, damn. I got you. Tony was right. This show is dope. Yeah. And I hit two likes, you know, two thumbs. Love this. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Netflix? Immediately. Yeah. Pause. Two thumbs. And then went back to the show and I was like, this is good, man. Yeah. But yeah, you know, there's times where I just want to, I just want to give up. I like radio has gotten the best of me, bro. And sometimes there's in my position, in my department, in commercial production, it's, it could be, it's like that movie Revenant with Leonardo DiCappuccino, where he just keeps coming back from the dead. That's how I feel with the amount of work that Tony and I and the people in continuity have to endure. Mm -hmm. It's, it's insane. And I'm like, why am I, I'm so stressed out about this. Why am I allowing myself to let it get to me as a person? Yeah. Rather than just kind of going, it's the job. And the job isn't hard, man. Nah, it's not hard. You. But yeah. sometimes situations and certain folks can contribute to it not being as smooth sailing as it should be, as it could be, the way right. it should be, right? right. But I know we have to endure that. You have to bite your tongue, just kind of mm -hmm. and keep going. And there's times where I'm like, man, I just want to move out of California and move to like up north with my sister for a while and just be in a different city where nobody knows me right and get away from all that shit but not saying i'd quit i just kind of want to move away from la I, I would just do my job remotely from there right but i'm just like nah man god so don't want to put my sister up for that i don't want to put her out like that even though she's like no you're, you're more than welcome you know there's always a percentage of yourself that's like Phew. All right. All right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. again, my sister loves me. I love my sisters. I love both my sisters, but I don't want to have to go live with them. You know, it's just, I'm 46. It's just not a good look. Right. But I'm not saying I wouldn't either because I'm like, if something happens, if this ends, 
you got to have a backup plan. The option. Because I can't afford to live across the street from Warner Brothers <laughs> on the money I make. Right. I can't even afford to have a car because I gave it up to afford to where to afford where I live. Right. Which is very nice. Very nice. It's a high sky high rent, but fuck. I'm lucky. But in order to maintain that, the cost is to you as a human is significant. And I think with you living in where do you live? Long, Long Beach, Beach, right? Long Beach, 2-hour drive, you live in a apartment, home, apartment, apartment which is rent. It's a cost and an apartment wow. that you're not really there at that much. You know what I mean? Like you're there, but not like, I think you're probably here more or on the road to here and back more than you're actually under the roof. Affirmative. Cause I have my <laughs> night gigs. Oh, you that's know what right. I mean? See? Yeah. You got the night gigs. You got to like take care of DJing and driving to those gigs. Yep. You don't have to take equipment though. Right. Uh, or just your laptop. Maybe 5% of gigs. I got to take equipment right. to. Which is also comes with labor yeah and that's that's you know people think it's easy just to lug around equipment <laughs> heck no hey, although it is easier than back in the day oh fuck dude crates of records and yeah shit? yeah yeah but Way still easier. having to carry equipment that's not set up for you already it should be an extra cost because people are like yeah we could pay you like 500 for the gig and it's like nah, bump it up no. to six bro oh, at least eight the price went up yeah yeah especially because sure. of gas and everything mm -hmm. in la djing just went up yeah well, that's the beauty of working for yourself, mm -hmm. having the power to say no to this gig, yes to this gig. You know, I control the rate. Um, you know, here, um, I hate to say it, bottom of the barrel. Oh, we're just getting a message from Rachel here on the pod <clears throat> hotline that says, uh, would you be down to DJ our wedding? <laughs> Oh, would you man. DJ your own wedding? Uh, I don't think no. I that's too hard, right? Yeah. You'd have to hire somebody else, yeah, like like uh, Von De Wizard. I would not hire Von. No, <laughs> <laughs> because I do not know Von's skills. Okay, okay. I love Von. Yeah, Von yeah. is the homie. Yeah, yeah. But I've He's a never. Good DJ. I, I've, I've never. Heard, I've gotten. I've gotten him gigs before, and the clients have been very happy. Oh, really? Very happy. So I just based off the fact that I've never heard him DJ. Here's the thing: DJing an event like a live Lakers live or, uh, you know, over at universal city walk. That's yeah. one thing. Yeah. DJing a wedding is an entirely, entirely different game. Yeah. Entirely. I've done DJ. I've DJed weddings, some more better than others, mm -hmm. but I will say that the last wedding I DJed, I didn't feel very confident about it. I, really? I felt like I kind of failed because uh, <sighs> I wasn't prepared enough. And, and, and usually I bring a DJ with me. My, my boy splice will come yeah. with me and he's got, uh, an extensive amount of music. He DJs all the time. He's one of those DJs with no headphones. He just goes off the Serato and, he, you know, he's waving to everybody and taking pictures and still mixing on beat perfectly. Right. I'm like, how do you do that? How do you do that? Weddings are tough because yeah. it's someone's special day. Um, yeah. You know, and you don't want to ruin that. You know who's a dope wedding DJ? Is DJ Ron. You know who DJ Ron is? No. Power, no. formerly a power. I think he's on Sirius XM now. He was like Mr. Chalk and all those guys. Um, DJ Filipino? Ron. Yes. I think I know your are Ron about. spelled A-A-W-N. Uh, yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. He's a big Lakers guy. Is he? Yeah, yeah. Big old school, like, you know, hip hop. He's a hip hop aficionado, bro. I mean, yeah. this guy, but he's like a DJ DJ. He's like a DJ's DJ. Yeah. Like, he's that good and he's very quiet, kind of like Fuse. But man, when they get on the turntables, they just fuck you up. They just yeah. fuck you up. It's like one of those comics that just comes in and just fucking shatters the club. Who is this and guy? And you never even heard of him right. or her. And you're like, damn. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's how Ron and Fuse is. Like, those are the DJs that you got to have at a wedding because they're prepared with the right for the crowd, the age, appropriate age. So if there's older folks there, you know, I've heard Ron would go into like the popular songs, right? For the younger generation. But then as everybody's dancing, he'll slide into like... These days are happy days. Oh, happy days. And then going to some pit bullshit and then back into some Jefferson's like yeah. really mixing it, like taking you on this journey of eras. And, and that's a tough part, it's man, dope, man. Yeah. Because you got, I don't know, grandma and grandpa, you got the aunties and uncles yep. and they're a different generation of music. Big time. So it's tough to, yeah. They want to hear Mix. some cumbias. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Juana la Cubana. Yeah. You yeah. know, but you want, you got the crowd that wants to hear Mo Bamba. Yep. So it's, you got to just. 
then you got the crowd who's like, it, uh, what's it? Um, oh my God. Color me bad. Yeah. I'm going to sex you up. You know poison. I mean? Yes. That's and, my generation, yeah. bro. Yeah. When I drop that poison shit, yeah. well, bitch better have my money by AMG, not yep. the Rihanna track. Yeah. But the, the original bitch yep. better have my money. Oh, come on. You don't play that at a wedding, though. Uh, no, not that <laughs> I guess one. later at the, in the night when everybody's wasted and about to fight, then well, you play. <laughs> yeah, that last hour, it gets it gets dirty, it grimy. It gets real grimy, yeah. bro. Real kind of obnoxious, yeah. bro. Yeah. All, the, all everyone's ties are off yeah. or loose. The ladies got their heels off. Yep. They're dancing in their bare feet. Yep. Yep. And you got one, like, one family member who's about to fight the other family <laughs> member, right? That's the best, bro. And you get on the mic, hey, you stop the music, hey, 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 come on, man. Enough of that, enough of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get the music. Sorry about that, guys. And then you get the <laughs> poison back on, and everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> it's what? <wild. laughs> I, I love weddings, but, uh, man, the preparation is, is nuts. Yeah. And not just with the DJ set playlists, but uh, everything. it's like the the suit, the best man, the venue, the yeah. catering, the wedding dress, the ring. I mean, it's it's like a quick, I think moving to a new house from a different state to a new country is easier than planning a wedding. That's probably true. I would calculate that moving is easier as a, as a cost to you as a human than a wedding. We were just talking today mm -hmm. uh, on the show, Booker Stryker and myself, how Booker is currently going through that. Oh, because he's going to get married. Yeah. That's right. So he, he was expressing to us. Oh, my God. The stress and the frustration of things happening. And it's, yeah, man, it's wild. While holding down this job. Yeah. Right. The, being on air here at yeah. iHeart on all 98.7 and doing his podcast. with, with Is he still doing the podcast still, with Perez? Still doing it. <laughs> yeah. Bro. So he's got a lot of stuff on his plate. And, yeah. you know, you're planning this party, but, you know, you got to address this you gotta address this and the date and the venue and mom and you know it let gets me tough. ask you one important question that I, we just skipped over which is what if do you ever not what if but do you ever think about to yourself what if i propose to rachel and she says no does that ever cross your mind because or are you so confident of her love for you that she would say yes immediately uh, I don't think it ever crossed my mind that she would say no. Mm -hmm. Um, but there is know. a possibility, right? I guess for anyone, right? For anything, you that know, would scare the shit out of me. Nothing, bro. nothing is a hundred percent. I don't know. I just, I've, except your skills. Oh. <laughs> I've never, it's never crossed my mind to be honest. Yeah. But yeah. I'm sure she would say yes before you even finish asking the question. You just, <laughs> You just pop open the, the ring box and Rachel, these like, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, finally, you can get your dog, babe. <laughs> How awesome. Oh, man. Dude. Yeah. I don't know. It's not, uh, it's not a fear of mine. Right. Well, I imagine it wouldn't be. 10 years is some strong love, bro. Have you guys ever broken up and gotten back together? Has there been like any turmoil or like where you, you separate and you come back to each other? Oh, uh, that I can think of. No. Really? Steady for 10 years? Well, I mean, I'm not saying right. it's all been sunflowers and sunshine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's everyone mm -hmm. goes through their downs. But you're so chill though, bro. Nah. Is I, Rachel I, as chill as you are? We're both chill. Yeah. But we... we you could bump heads when really you, when we bump heads i imagine she's calm like you is she calm like you no or is she no anxious? She, I, I don't mean to say like she's like wild or but, anything no like but that, the way but. you talk like even th through this whole podcast you've been, you've had you've kept this octave of like this well you know it's just i mean every now it's like it never goes above <laughs> yeah. you're just chill eh, how i don't know how are you so chill I don't know. Do you like? Uh, do you do any kind of martial arts or or physical activity that that, re that drains your your stress to the point where you? Because it, it's almost like you're like an MMA fighter who's just finished rolling and fighting for your life, and you come out of the octagon cage and you're just like, "Hey, what's up, man?" Yeah. Because most of those guys are like that in real life. They're yeah. so chill because they beat the shit out of each other all they, day. They they exert that energy yeah. into that that small amount of time. There's that word, yeah. exert. I. I man, I don't know if I have an answer for that. I just, I just am. What's your a sign calm again, Pisces? Dude. Leo. Oh, that's right, Leo. You're a Leo. Yeah, you're about a calm to be lion. thirty nine in a week. 
again, we record a podcast a week before your birthday. Holy shit. So it was a year. It, wait. But it, we're close. Very close. I got to consult the Instagram again for our last post. Here we go. It was June 8th, 2023. Yeah. yeah. So you're, and then your episode aired that Saturday. Mm -hmm. I think I might put out this episode earlier than Saturday. I think I'm going to just put it out. If not tonight, tomorrow, just get it out. Yeah. I, I don't like sitting on them for too long, especially if they're recorded earlier in the week. Right. Typically I release them on Saturday night or Saturday evening because I have time. That's the only time I have to edit that, edit it together. Right. I'm like, fuck it, bro. Why knock not? It, knock it's it been out. two months. It's almost been two full months since who's, I posted. Who was the last guest? Oh, Ryan Jameson, Let the Bees Husband, who's a oh, professional the... caddy on the PGA Tour. Yeah. Very, another guy, super fucking calm, bro. Yeah. Calm. How? I don't know. Well, for golf, that seems like such a calming It is sport. calm. But he's like, you, mm. just calm. And he never went above an octave. Letty and I, we relate to each other. We're just like, ah, you know. Oh my God. <laughs> Letty from Coast. Yeah, Letty yeah, yeah, yeah. from Coast, formerly of Kiss and out in Miami. Mm -hmm. She's been with iHeart for forever. But yeah, Letty B, who also does her own podcast, the Taylor Talk podcast, which I was helping her start and produced it. And now she took the training wheels off me and is doing it on her own now. Nice. Do Booker and Stryker have a podcast? Don't they have one together? Not not their own separate ones, because I know uh, Stryker has a, a tune on toast, right? Yep. And yep. Uh, Booker has the Perez Hilton podcast, right? What is what is that one called again? The name of it? Uh, I think it's just called the Perez Hilton podcast. That's right. Featuring yeah. Chris Booker. Correct. Right, right. Yeah. And you, you don't have no podcast. You've been on mine twice. But I do not have a podcast. No. Uh, I've been featured on yours twice yeah. now. Yeah. Um, a buddy, was funny enough, asked me a couple of days ago to be on his podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to do that. Um, but yeah, the guys, Booker and Stryker, we have a recap episode of That's each right. day. That's right. That I'll produce right after the show, throw it up. So if you ever miss the show live, you could always go. It's just a condensed it. version it's minus the music and minus commercials. Minus the music, yep. Right? So that's kind of dope. That's But that takes work. Yeah. It you it pull doesn't, all those it talk breaks. Doesn't do it by itself. That, we do that for Big Boy as well. Yeah. And I have to produce promos for that. And it's cool, man. It's it's cool to be able to do that in podcasts and, and kind of like it's like a recap. Mm -hmm. It's a recap how of they the do day. on Netflix, but of the day, of every day, which is hard, man. Correct. Correct. What do you use, Reg? What do you use to edit? Uh, Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition, which is like the Pro Tools of PC. Mm -hmm. Even though Pro Tools is on PC, it's like the PC version of Pro Tools. Yeah. Have you ever worked on any other program other than Serato, which you DJ on, right? Yeah. But as far as editing, do you prefer Adobe Audition or do you prefer, like, would you, would you want to step it up to Pro Tools or Ableton to produce your own music and what have you? If I had access to it, yeah, I would I would want to learn them. Um, I don't have access to them, though. But, you know, Pro Tools Studio is like 300 bucks a year. Uh, you oh, have a subscription? It's a subscription because it gives you more <clears throat> updates. Gotcha. You can buy it outright, uh, what they call perpetual license. Right. But then you're stuck to that version only. And with today's plugins and the vastness of how fast things are rolling out, right. it's cheaper and better just to have the subscription. Right. And it pays for you. It's a tax write-off. Oh yeah, because it's a work. thousand percent. Yeah. yeah, and it pays for itself. Three. I mean, that program is like ninety nine point eight percent flawless to me. Like it crashes every now and again, but not really. Is it a PC version or is there a Mac version? There's Mac and PC versions of Pro Tools Studio. Pro Tools Studio is the most basic version of Studio of Pro Tools you can get nowadays. Yeah, before they had Pro Tools LE and then Pro Tools twelve point blah 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 blah. Now it's just Pro Tools Studio, which is what we do, just production. In fact, Pro Tools Studio is even has so many features that we'll never use. Yeah. It's like for video editing and this and that and composing and MIDI. We just need basic editing like Vox Pro with multiple tracks. Right. right? And some plugins here and there. Yeah. But really, Pro Tools Studio is the move, bro. And it's dark mode now. Because before, means what? Pro Tools used to look like, I remember I used to equate it to looking like if... If a hospital was an editing program, it would look like Pro Tools because mm. that's how bland everything looked. It was just this white, gray, very bright. And I'm like, God, I feel like I'm in a fucking hospital lobby. Yeah. 
When did he go dark? Because Ableton already went dark mode. I'm like, this is the way to go. It took Pro Tools like five years, maybe even longer, to find when the Pro Tools Studio came out or really Pro Tools 13, I guess. That's when they went dark mode. And I was like, oh, man. I'm going to have to look into it, It's man. good, man. Yeah, just to learn and have in my repertoire. I think for you, the amount of production that you do for the guys for Booker and Striker and then the podcast recap you do daily. Mm-hmm. And then possibly doing Music some mixing production. stuff, right? Yeah. Now, I will say Ableton is better for mixing and making music. I would use Ableton to produce jump off mixes because of the way you can warp the records to match the BPM without mm-hmm. it sounding like you warped it. Right. Um, but nowadays, I don't really mix that much. I just transition quick on pro on promos, music promos. Quick cuts. Quick cuts, but they still sound like they're almost mixed. Right. And that I use Pro Tools for that. And it's, man, the quality, bro. It's the quality. Every, nothing else can compare to it to me. I'm like, man, you you find the right settings with the compression and the limiter and some fucking Ozone 11? Bro, what? But Sketch, you're next level, man. Oh, you're, you're, really. you're a legend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, come on. Come on. Not like Henny the Orange Shirt. <laughs> But thank you. No, no I yeah. mean, I, I, but I only use basic settings. I'm just a basic settings kind of guy. Yeah. Very unorthodox. I'm sure that other producers, if they saw how I produce stuff, even this podcast, they'd be like, really? You stack the tracks? Why don't you just set this to a higher... Da-da? There's a regular way to do it, and then there's my way to do it. My way is not the right way, but it fucking works, and it sounds good. Yeah. It takes a little longer, but I like it. I like the way I do it, but right. I see other guys and they're, they're doing it the right way. They draw on the dots within the waves. They cut the plug in that, or they assign an entire plug into one channel. Mm-hmm. I don't do that. I render each sound effect or each echo or delay or filter. I render it to each wave. Right. I don't like one. I don't, because it takes up too much CPU out of your computer. Oh, does it? It costs too much. Ah. To me, it's just better just to render it because it allows you that option as opposed to having the Ozone 11 plug in running endlessly and everything's echoing all over the place no matter even if you're just previewing it it's like wait what right you don't need that yeah but some people like it i pref- i preferably choose to render it's just so much easier but you would love it you'd love it just with the factory settings the amount of shit you can do on that program for the guys and for yourself be dope bro dope come on man i'm gonna do it if rachel Watch. won't let you have a dog <laughs> Pro hey, Tools the money the I'm pro- saving, I'm not having a dog. I could do Pro Fuck. Tools. You're play, you're saving thousands, yeah, thousands of dollars, bro, yeah, for sure. Um, did we leave off on anything before we wrap this up? I, I feel like we kind of jumped out of one conversation a little too soon that I wanted to finish on, and I, I kind of forgot where what it was because all of it was so enlightening. Um, I don't know. I think we did kind of touch a bit on everything, but I don't know if we left the Lakers thing we were talking about. I feel like we might have jumped out of that a little too soon just because you were talking about um, meeting all the players and, and mm. some of the athletes and celebrities right. and whatnot. Yeah. To go back to it, I, I think <clears throat> I think they love me and I definitely love them. So yeah. I hope to be there for season three, season four, season five. I want you there for the Bronny LeBron opening night. Bro. <laughs> and wh- it, if it does happen, and in the past, where did you DJ at? So if it does happen, where they know, they know where to find you. Anytime I do any Laker gigs, I am outside of the arena, outside right. of what is now called crypto.com right. arena. I'm not an in-game arena. Right. DJ, um, I do pregame three hours before tip off, and that's the LA Live style, right? You're you're kind of in that LA Live open courtyard. Yep, right? My, I'm connected to the LA Live speakers. That's right. Yeah, so I don't have you know these speakers that I set up myself. Right. I'm I'm in house, well outside, but right. LA Live in house system. You're on the the house system. Yeah, playing towards crypto.com arena it you can hear it from right you can hear it from the yard house to tom and you're like facing uh, the statues like the they shacks move, they move me around mm. they, they'll change the setup every now and then sometimes i'll be by lazy dogs sometimes i'll be closer to the statues sometimes i will be um where you know where um the parking 
is where it starts. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, so like they'll, they'll switch it up. Now, do you get to go to the games after your set? It depends if I buy my own ticket. Uh, they, they don't, don't, they don't you, hook you no, up like that or even no. hook you up like, like people who didn't pick up their will call tickets. You know, sometimes there's standby tickets. I, I will say, I don't know if I can really speak on much of it, mm -hmm. but I will say they do take care of me. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, cool. I don't get <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> free tickets, but I get taken care of, you know, financially. For sure. Um, parking. And it's just good optics. And, it's a they, great, they treat you like a rock star. They they treat me very very well, which I'm very grateful for. I I don't have anything bad to say about my job there or complain about there. It's right. it's amazing. No, I bet, bro. I've yeah. been wanting to get down there and check you out. I was thinking about taking the the subway over to the <laughs> Staples Center. I'm sorry, <laughs> to Crypto.com Arena. I still say Staples. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just, you know, I just haven't had time and I got to figure out a way. But every time I see your post, you're like, come check me out if you're I, here. I beg people to come all the time. I give, see, so they don't give me free tickets, but they will give me free tickets to give away. What? Wait. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's all part of the. That's the, part of the experience. Right. 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 You're yeah. winning stuff. I have autographed jerseys to give away. Whoa. I have free tickets to give away. Uh, they're. How I mentioned the the older Lakers are there, yeah. So it's a cool event, yeah. Every time it's a it's really an event event, yeah. Before yeah. the game event, it's it's almost like equivalent to a tailgate party, yeah. But for basketball, yeah. You without could, the cars, you could drink there, yeah. Brought to you by Michelob Ultra, the official beer nice. sponsor of your LA Lakers. Oh, uh, you're reading an ad <laughs> right there. Look at you. That's exactly what it is, and. The Laker girls, so it's really fun, man. Yeah. I, I try to tell people as much as I as possible. Yeah, come check it out. I want to, bro. Next time, if you, if and when you're there again, yeah. I'm gonna make it a point to yeah. come out and just if I have to Uber over there, I'm gonna come hang out. I'm gonna jump on stage with you and grab the mic. What's up, y'all? Yeah. What's up, DJ Regulate? <laughs> How many Lakers fan we got here? You can hear your own drops that you made. Oh, me, man. that's right. Yeah. Let's hit one real quick. DJ Regulate. Well, DJ Regulate, I can't thank you enough for coming through again for the homie, the old Omatic, and uh, for your insight and your enlightenment on life, what you're going through, the crosses you bear, and sharing your, you know, your personal life with me and shit yeah. on this episode. And I hope that to have you back again when you do get signed for season three. Regulate! Hit him with the social real quick. Uh, DJ Regulate, spelled D-J-R-E-G-U-L-8, the number eight, and that's on Instagram, mm -hmm. Twitter. Um, TikTok? No TikTok. That's right. I remember I tried to tag you on TikTok. No, no, TikTok, no TikTok. You gotta get a TikTok. You gotta just at least own it. Is you it, don't have to post, just own the name. Is it gonna, gonna be banned? I don't know. I don't think so, bro. Maybe. No. I don't know the way things are going with Trump and all this shit. I don't, I don't know, bro. <laughs> I, I honestly feel like that's taken a huge backseat. Mm. It, it was really at the forefront it of was. conversation for a long time. But now, I, I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, they, they threw out fucking Trump's, uh, you know, the, court case. the document court case things, right? The files. They yeah. threw that out just because they were like, well, you know, he took almost took a bullet to the face. So yeah. let's have him, let him have this one, right? <laughs> Maybe TikTok, if Trump does win, he's just going to be like, ah, fuck it. It's fine. Fuck it. You know? Um, Maybe not, though, because he was against it, I think. Oh, was he? I think he was. No idea about whether he was or I wasn't. I can't remember. I might be, again, people, I may be wrong. I'm not fact-checking. I'm This is pure sketulation, speculation, all right? I think when I listened to Rogan, mm -hmm. I remember him talking about it recently on an episode and him saying that Trump was trying to get it banned as, as well as Biden. Right. So, but I think they're only trying to get it banned within government offices, like, you know, the CIA and the FBI, like the the agents can't use it i think that's oh, the biggest deal but really? that was at first i think now they're trying to get it banned across the fucking board unless they sell it to right. america which they're not gonna do no you kidding me yeah they're winning that's money they're fucking winning bro tiktok is owning they're dunking on every other social media platform dude so, so with that being said i might get a tiktok just try it try it out bro just at least not not try it or post just own the name right at least own the handle right at dj regulate yeah right yeah do it for me bro do All it for right. henny the orange shark <laughs> henny and sketch that's right i got it's you. a good combo 
All right. DJ Regulate. Much love, much appreciation. I appreciate you, bro. Bro hugs. Yeah, man. Fist bumps and high chest bumps. Yes, sir. That's what's up. Thanks, man. Thank you. Oh, good for you. And how was it? The Sketchomatic Show. Hey, too much information and shit, man. Shut your mouth, S.A. Okay, bye. That's your dad, bro. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Unacceptable. <laughs> it's as bad as getting fucking removed and unfollowed on Instagram. <laughs> Rejected. All right. It's enough of that. Over oh, two. Can we forget about the things I said when I was drunk? Yeah, you know.